where he received commissions for two altarpieces, St. Martin and an Assumption of the Virgin. Both of these are now lost. He worked under the protection, if not the direct patronage, of, of um, Mario Farnese, who was a distant cousin of the Parma Duke, um, who seems to have um, who seems to have thought of himself as kind of a, a, a discoverer of, of new talents. He must have known works by Ribera in Rome, um, otherwise it would be very difficult to explain how this very young painter um, uh, managed, uh, managed to obtain important altarpiece commissions as early as 1611, or actually commissioned in 1610. Um, the St. Martin altarpiece in particular was important in establishing Ribera's early reputation. It was sufficiently well known um, to have been mentioned in a letter written by Ludovico Caracci in 1618. The Bolognese artist praised the painting and worried that the young Spaniard would surpass him. Referring to a visit um, to the collection of Ferrante Carlo, a collector from Parma who was resident in Rome, he recalled that it was good to know the opinion of, quote, those painters of excellent taste, especially that painter who follows the school of Caravaggio. If he is the one who painted a St. Martin in Parma and stayed with Signore Mar Mario Farnese, one should take care and keep one's wits, lest poor Lodovico be consigned to the provinces. A few years later, in 1621, Giulio Mancini wrote that Ribera's work in Parma had aroused the jealousy of local painters. Quote, while still quite young, having journeyed through Lombardy to see the work of those able men, finding himself in Parma, he aroused the jealous fear in those who served his highness that coming to the notice of the prince, he might be taken into the latter's service, causing them to lose their positions. For that reason, they forced him to leave. The outlines of Ribera's reputation are already beginning to take shape. He is a talented um, artist and an envied artist. Um, and I remind you that, that this latter condition um, um, is, um, a, 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 along with absence or death, is, is a condition of fame to, to be envied. Um, I do wonder, however, if Lodovico's failure to call him by name and to just, just call him that Spanish painter who follows in the school of Caravaggio isn't just a little bit um, um, derisive. Um, <clears throat> Mancini, who, who describes Ribera as the most, the most naturally gifted artist to have appeared in many years, goes on to describe his activity in Rome, where he must have worked for dealers um, kind of on a per diem basis. Uh, it, it seems that many young painters did this because it gave them access to, uh, to a workshop and to materials um, and a chance to establish their reputations. Uh, Mancini's account of Ribera's loose life in the Eternal City sounds suspiciously like the second coming of Caravaggio, whose path he follows. He considered Ribera's handling of paint to be even bolder and more experimental than Caravaggio. Um, among the works he painted in Rome were some that belonged uh, to an unnamed Spaniard, and I'm quoting again from, from Mancini, who has five very beautiful half figures of the senses, a Christ deposed and others, which in truth are things of exquisite beauty. Uh, this is a painting in the Wadsworth Athenaeum that has been identified as, as one of the paintings um, described by Mancini in the collection of this unnamed Spaniard. Now Gianni Papi, who I mentioned before, has identified Ribera's Spanish patron as someone named Pedro Cosida or Cusida, who was a trade agent of the Spanish king in Rome. Uh, and an inventory of his collection includes five paintings of the census, as well as a series of apostles that Papi has um, connected um, to works that were formerly attributed to the master of the, the, the judgment of Solomon. So that's, that's 
how that group of works was reconstructed and attributed um, to Ribera. Or that's the basis on which the attribution is made, at least the documentary basis, if not the visual one. This is Ribera's earliest signed work, um, probably painted around 1614, 1615, when he was still in Rome. It may be the work that was acquired by Mancini himself in, in 1615, and which he described in a letter to his brother as the Saint Jerome by El Spagnoletto, who came to Rome after studying in Parma and who raised hopes and showed great promise, but then cooled off. This work, in which he seems to have returned to his earlier form, came into my hands and I bought it. Note the, note the contrast between this mildly pejorative nickname, Spagnoletto, the little Spaniard, and the Latin inscription on the painting. I transcribed the, the inscription in red. Um, Jose Ribera, Valencian, from the city of Hativa, Spaniard, made me. So that's a pretty, pretty elaborate um, signature. That's one of only two signed works from the Roman period. This is the other one. And this one is signed Jose Ribera, Spaniard, Valencian, from the city of Hativa, Roman ac academician. So Ribera became a member of the Roman Academy of St. Luke in, um, in 1613, and thereafter occasionally added this title um, to, his, to his signature. So in other words, in, in, in addition to naming his birthplace and nationality, he now asserts his professional status as a member of the Painters Academy. I'm going to show you one more. Um, this is a later work. This one was painted in Naples in 1631. But in it, Ribera asserts his social status and compares himself to the greatest painter of antiquity. This not so modest signature forms part of the long explanatory inscription uh, beside the, the full-length portrait of Magdalena Ventura. In it, he identifies himself as a knight of the order of Christ, not to mention a modern appellees. So it's a, these, these signatures become a, a really interesting way of, of uh, or an interesting method of self-representation. Um, you, you sometimes see signatures like this on portraits, but these are not portraits, and he consistently um, signs in these rather, these rather elaborate ways. This is a painting that was commissioned by Pedro Afán de Ribera, the third Duke of Alcalá, who was Ribera's most important patron in the late 20s and early 30s um, when he was the Viceroy of Naples. He had previously been um, Philip IV's ambassador um, to Pope Urban VIII, He's sort of a famously anti-Spanish pope. Um, this unusual work is documented in a description written by the Venetian ambassador to Naples. Um, in January of 1631, he wrote, in the rooms of the Viceroy, there was an extremely famous painter was making a portrait of an Abruzzi woman, married and the mother of many children, who has a completely masculine face with a beautiful black beard and more than a palmo long, more beautiful black beard, more than a palmo long, and a very hairy chest. His Excellency wanted me to see her, thinking it was a marvelous thing, and truly it is. I think it's significant that the Venetian ambassador refers to Ribera as a very famous painter, since that's basically what he's done in the, the signature, in his own signature, by comparing himself to, um, to Apelles. Um, Javier Portus, who is the uh, curator of Spanish painting at the Prado, has compiled some statistics on Ribera's signatures, and they're actually kind of interesting. Between 1624 and 1652, 180 of 280 works um, included in the latest catalog raisonné of, of Ribera's paintings are signed. Um, in these 
works, as often as not, Ribera asserts not just his authorship, but his nationality. Um, this is sometimes seen as a, a kind of a commercial strategy designed to appeal to Spanish patrons in Naples. Um, I don't dispute that possibility, but, but given the often cited preference of Spanish patrons for foreign painters and paintings, um, I wonder if there isn't just a little bit more to it. Uh, the signatures reveal an unusual level of personal and professional self-awareness, and the artist clearly considered his place of origin to be a mark of, of personal distinction. Um, it may be appropriate to view these, these signatures as, as an assertion of um, kind of collective achievement as well, in which Ribera presents himself as a, as a credit to his country of origin. Um, uh, it's actually, the, uh, it's almost a direct paraphrase of, of Pacheco who describes him as a, a credit to his country of origin. It may also be that, that patrons simply demanded um, a signature. They wanted a work by, by, this, by this very famous painter and um, they wanted a signature on it. Um, I think there are a number of other a number of other possibilities to um, to consider when we think about his signatures. Speaking of which, with fame comes envy. The painting, uh, this painting is actually signed on a piece of paper in the lower um, left corner. Hope you can see that. It's not very clear. Um, it's signed in Latin with the full name of the artist his nationality, and his place of origin. See it a little bit better. Um, and it also, it also indicates that it was painted in Naples, which is a new, a new detail. He's a Roman academician, he's Spanish, and he's from Valencia. Um, in, a ver in, 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 in what is a very clear allusion to envy, this elaborately signed piece of paper is being attacked by a snake and torn. It's not known for whom this work was painted, but it's dated 1626, which was the same year um, uh, that Ribera received the cross of the Order of Christ, which is a, a, a papal order. Um, it was much later acquired by um, a, a merchant collector of Flemish descent, but it's really not known for whom it was originally painted. So this mo motif of a signature with a snake um, may be familiar to you, since it also appears in El Greco's Martyrdom of St. Maurice at the Escorial. Um, talk about an artist with a, um, um, a, a, a healthy, what should I say, a, a healthy dose of uh, um, self-awareness, um, and that would be that would be El Greco. So uh, it appears uh, these kinds of signatures are documented in a couple of other places. I don't I don't know of any others that survive. You may, but.